Okay, good evening. Um, this is a package that arrived in the mail yesterday. Um, it has some goodies in there, so I think I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So, it's a little package. Let's see what we have in here. Well, I actually do know what's in there. Okay. So we have in the box is some Raspberry Pis. Actually, um, two Raspberry Pi Model Bs uh, and two Raspberry Pi 3 Model Bs. So um, let's go ahead and open this up and see what's in there. Well, I can see what's in there, but let's take a look. So I went ahead and took out my, um, uh, what I got this time, uh, two Raspberry Pi 2 Model Bs. These were actually on sale, so I went ahead and grabbed these. They're about 10% off, a uh, regular price. And this is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, made in the UK. And it also has the Telec, um, symbol which um, means that uh, it is allowed to be used in Japan. Um, in Japan all devices which emit radio waves uh, probably there's something more specific around that regulation but must have uh, this telic approval uh, for use in Japan since the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 has uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi support um, it obviously emits radio waves, it needs to get this regulatory approval. And that's one of the reasons why um, in Japan, rather than be, uh, these being available on February 29th, like I believe the rest of the world, or at least in the US, UK, etc., um, these just came became available in Japan uh, in mid-March, late March, and actually was able to get these on uh, March 30th or right 29th somewhere around there all right and um, let's see how much were they a piece these were actually the Raspberry Pi 3 was uh, 5,250 yen a piece so that's roughly what about $50 US um, so it's not quite $35 35 US dollars equivalent in Japan. It's a little bit more expensive. Raspberry Pi on the other hand, Raspberry Pi 2 Model B on the other hand was uh, 4,400 yen, I think. Yeah, 4,400 yen. They used to be about close to 5,000 yen a piece, so it was quite a bit cheaper um, now. And since they're out of stock, I guess I was lucky to get these, get my hands on these ahead of time. Okay, uh, I guess I'll take a look at what's inside. So, we'll open it up. Here we go. Okay, as usual, we have the uh, instruction manual, which doesn't make them out. Here we go. Okay, I've seen one of these in previous Raspberry Pi models as well. Um, oh, but let's see. Raspberry Pi 3 Model B uncased version. I guess they might be selling a uh, case bundled version sometime in the future, well, at least. That's what it, or maybe they are selling it right now. I'm just not aware of it. Anyway, please retain, retain this information for future reference. Uh, okay, regulatory compliance. Uh, some stuff in French. Okay, so they have. Uh, Ooh, they have some in Chinese as well. Okay. Oh, okay. There's some in Japanese as well. Okay. Let's see. All right. So this kind of looks familiar, but I maybe 
Okay, this is interesting. This product shall be connected to an external power supply rate of 5 volts DC and a minimum current of 2 amps. Any external power supply used at the Raspberry Pi shall comply with the rel relevant regulations and standards if applicable in the country of intended use. The product should not be overclocked as it may make certain components very hot. Operate in a well-ventilated environment and should not be covered. Okay, does that mean you can't put it in the case? Now oh, what else? Mm, place it on a stable fly, non-conductive service, blah blah blah. Okay, that regular stuff. Alright. So that's that. Let's get this out. And the actual item itself. Nothing else is in there. Okay. Here we have the Raspberry Pi 3, as usual, in the static, uh, static shielding bag. Okay. All right, so here we have the Raspberry Pi 3. So this time around, they say that this Broadcom CPU is the BCM2837. Um, and I believe this is a, uh, it's got one gigabyte of RAM. And a little new addition is this guy over here is supposed to be the antenna for uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So that's a new thing compared to the Raspberry Pi 2. All right, I guess I'll, we'll take a look at the um, Raspberry Pi 3 and some details. And I guess we'll compare it with the Raspberry Pi 2 that I have back here. All right, first of all, um, the most notable change is, uh, well, obviously, there's the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support, which is the biggest change for this model. But another part that's been changed is the CPU has been upgraded. In the uh, Raspberry Pi 2, that's uh, this guy over here, the previous generation uh, was the Broadcom uh, BCM2836 as the processor, but now in the Raspberry Pi 3, it is the BCM2837. I believe that the uh, uh, CPU core is now actually fast more than one gigahertz. I think it was 1.2 gigahertz or something? Yes, it is a um, 1.2 gigahertz uh, processor. It's actually um, an ARM Cortex A53, um, where the previous, in previous generation was a uh, ARM Cortex A7. And it's actually a 64-bit uh, processor. The other big change, of course, is that the um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth has been added. This right here is actually a small antenna that's surface mounted directly onto the PCB, which is used for both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. All right, I'm gonna take a closer look. Oh, even says made in the UK. All right. And I guess another change is that um, I believe there's um, some kind of power-related circuitry, uh, which in the uh, Raspberry Pi 2 was an exposed die, which was photosensitive and could cause the Raspberry Pi to uh, crash. Um, if somebody was taking photographs of the Raspberry Pi using flash. But in this version, it's supposed to be uh, covered somehow, which uh, maybe is that black uh, chip right there. Let's take a look at the Raspberry Pi 2 in this comparison. Yeah, that's it. Um, as you can see over here, there's a bare die chip right there. I hear that um, the photosensitivity issue that caused the Raspberry Pi 2 to um, crash has been fixed in this iteration. I guess one thing that's notable for um, this model that's actually sold in Japan is that um, the unit itself does not have the um, Telex certification mark um, actually printed or attached to the device itself. I guess that's notable. And I guess another thing I just noticed was um, that there appears to be an extra die, an extra chip over here, a bear die chip that I wonder what it is. Um, it doesn't exist on the P Raspberry Pi 2, so it uh, might be something to take worth taking a look at. It seems a little interesting. OK, 
Okay, that pretty much concludes my um, first impression, first look at the Raspberry Pi 3. I hope you enjoyed watching this, and I'm actually looking forward to playing with this in the coming few, uh, coming days. So um, stay tuned, I'll be uploading more videos. Cool.